Hi, I'm Jim Calari. I'm the editorial director of Plastics Technology Magazine. I'm here again with Kevin Huntsman, who's the senior vice president of Masteo and Company. And we are continuing with our series of blogs and reports on polyethylene film markets based on research that Masteo and Company has concluded in March of this year. The topic for this session is consumer and industrial product liners. Uh, before we get into the deep dive on that product category, Kevin, why don't you give me uh, some information on Masteo and Company, the history of this polyethylene film study, your methodology, and once we're done with that, we'll take a look at the product liner segment of your study. Great, Jim. Thank you for the opportunity to, to visit with you today. We, we appreciate it here at Mastio. Mastio has been in business since 1989. The film study has been going on uh, almost for the entire lifetime of the company. We've actually finished the 11th edition that you referenced earlier in late March here in 2020. One of the key differentiations, I think, for a Mastio report versus other reports is that it's primary research. And what I mean by that, Jim, is that we are conducting these interviews ourselves. We're not combing the websites and, and the web for data. We're actually talking to the individuals at these companies in roles such as marketing or sales, engineering, procurement. So we're getting a good view of the entire organization in, in the various markets in which they participate. Okay, so let's take a deep dive on the product line of market. It's kind of a hodgepodge, it sounds to me, of a lot of different uh, products. Why don't you talk about the size of that market and any no noticeable changes in it since the last time you looked at it and what the opportunities might be for companies who are in that market or who are maybe looking to, to dip their toe in? Absolutely. So it, the consumer and product liner market, as you stated, is, I would say, a hodgepodge of different types of products, everything from the uh, Gaylord bag liner to steel drum liners, et cetera. Rack and counter bags are another piece in this and when you've got a variation of products you also get a large group of people that are participating in this market and we find that here Jim I mean we we, had, we look at this market as uh, between 800 and 900 million pounds on an annual basis so it's it's by no means small it's not what I would call a high growth market it uh, is a fragmented market after you look at the top two players which we've identified as Sigma and Barry and obviously both of them have been active on the the merger and acquisition trail and, and that's mm -hmm. how they've uh, grown so much in this market. Uh, we do, when we talk to, to these folks, the market itself, as I stated, isn't very large. And the largest players expect the, the least amount of growth versus some of the other smaller companies in this. And you find some companies, Jim, once you get past the first handful that are more niche oriented. But this is truly a very fragmented market when you look at the, the consumer and product liner market as well. And we think it'll continue in, to be a fragmented market as we look forward. Could you talk a little bit about the types of products that are used? What, what are they? I mean, yeah, they, are, they are liners and containers and boxes that hold products. Absolutely. I mean, you can look at things that uh, liners are used as inner packaging for the boxes, cans, bins, drums, totes. And mm -hmm. sometimes they're offer, also used as protection for the products that facilitate greater ease of removing, cleaning, and reuse of the outer containers. So if you think about like a, a barrel, or something to that effect. And you see things that uh, another product liner is something like a mattress cover, Jim. So mm -hmm. all the mattresses, once they're manufactured, and you, you see now uh, the, the move in the mattress business to the delivery at home, and it comes wrapped in a, in a particular liner, and you open it up, right. and it, it grows and becomes your mattress. So there's, there's growth there, but more often than not, this is a very industrial type market that doesn't mm -hmm. have a lot of margin and is not a high growth area. Good. Good. Okay. All right, Kevin, thanks very much for joining us today. Once again, um, I would ask our audience to please read the blog. I get into a little bit more detail about each of these markets. And uh, please click on to the blog to the Mastio and Company website to get more information from them. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Jim.